Hello everybody and welcome back to Factorio. For those of you that have been with me for a long time, you may remember this game. Check out my little guy over here. This game has come a really long way since I last played this. We played this when it was, I think, a Kickstarter project and we helped that one get in development. I had a lot of fun with this game when it first came out and then I kind of lost interest. That's typical of me. I'm not really uh, a gamer as such and uh, I can just kind of lose interest in things like that. But I've been watching Zistu play this game recently and it has really kind of inspired me to uh, to start playing this one once again and I found that it just feels like everything I didn't quite like about the first game, even though obviously the core concept I really did like, just feels like everything is right this time round. You know, there's a bigger tech tree, there's much more to do and uh, there feels like there's more purpose, you know, there's a way to beat the aliens or so I hear. I haven't seen that far into the game. Uh, but in general, there's just a lot more to be done. And it looks like it might be turning to night, which is never a good time to record. But in Factorio, it's going to be night quite often. So let's get let's get going with this. Uh, what do we need? First of all, we need to put this down on iron, I think, is the way you get started. We've got an iron patch over here. We have stone over there and coal up the top. So let's plop this thing down and get going. Now this world is going to be, uh, we need to mine some coal by the way, is going to be a casual world for me playing on it. You know, I can be a little bit of a perfectionist with my videos, which can really hold me back and uh, stop my enjoyment sometimes. This is not what we're supposed to make first. We're supposed to chop down a tree and make a pick. Yes, I'm forgetting everything that I've learned, although it has been a while since I've done the first baby steps because I've been playing in this other world and just really, really enjoying it. And as I said, I can be a little bit of a perfectionist with these videos and I decided, look, I'm having really great fun with this game. This is what I do, you know, I make videos on games, so we're just going to do it and have fun with it. So I want this series to be kind of casual. How much do we get? Six. We'll get a little bit more, just a little bit. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I just want to chill out and play this game from time to time, and I thought I'll make some videos of it. So it's going to be relaxed. Don't expect me to do things well. You know, I've only been playing this game a little bit, and playing it for fun as well. I have had a lot of fun playing it, and uh, I haven't really figured out the best way of doing all the things. But let's talk a little bit more from the perspective of you have no idea what this game is about. It is about automation. It's about collecting things in this alien world and uh, kind of beating the game by killing, I think, most of the aliens, and then there's some sort of end-game technology. But from what I understand, there is now a huge tech tree. I've seen most of it where I've been playing in this other world. And uh, you want to climb it up by climb up the tech tree by automating everything. And that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be building an unraveling base that will automate production of all the different things in the game. Uh, this thing needs fuel as well. That was silly. <laughs> okay, so this is how you start out. You kind of get a few basic materials together. And, uh, and then you can take things from there, really. So I need to get a little bit more coal at the moment and uh, take it... I'm not sure exactly where, actually. Now that we have one of those things producing iron for us... By the way, I didn't really explain what each machine was, did I? Let's have a look here. What we need to craft next is another one of those. So at the moment, we need a little bit of stone and some iron. There is a stone patch over here, so that's something... Um, that I need to mine. So what we uh, we built so far, we start off with a mining drill. You put that down, you put fuel in it, and it gets going. And it'll take the materials um, from below it and put it into whatever is next to it. And what we put next to it was a furnace. So it's taking the iron and it's smelting us into... Uh, it's smelting us. <laughs> it's smelting it into iron plates just over here. And uh, we can take those now. There we go. You can control click on these to take them out like that. They go into your inventory. And now we can craft something else. So we're going to craft another one of those, and really we want another one after that as well. So let's head back up the top here. This is where we need to go. We want to pick up a little bit more stone. And uh, this is this is mainly from Zistu that I've kind of got this starting method down. See, I've been watching a lot of his videos, learning from him, been really inspired by it, and just enjoying playing the game. And I just wanted to translate that into videos. So, by the way, these videos, as I've said, are going to be quite casual. I think they're going to be short as well. I just want to do little bite-sized videos because as we progress further into the game, there's going to be a lot of stuff that isn't really interesting to watch continuously. You know, like building bases and setting things up. You'll probably just want to see the end product where I'll explain how things work. Okay, so we've got two of these pointing into each other. This is just a fantastic way to get going because once you put a single piece of coal in here, we already had some, didn't need to dig it up, and this one is now going and it's going to get coal and put it into the one on the other side. Now this one's going and it's going to put coal into the one over here. So they're now producing coal together, which is fantastic. You can then walk up to them, control click the coal out, and then you've got some in your inventory which you can move on to something else. So what have we set up so far? The mining drill, that's now out of coal. Um, that needs some more. And uh, I'm getting stuck on this little tree here. And that is just a stone rock. 
So let's uh, put some more fuel in here and then give me a second to think about what comes next. We kind of want to aim towards getting a pipe, uh, sorry, a pump and some, yeah, some energy. I'll tell you what, this is one of those moments where I need to stop and think. So yeah, I'm getting ahead of myself here. We actually kind of need to get these set up on uh, another material as well. We kind of want it on this one over here, stone. We're going to need a bit of that as we go through, and copper, which is over on this side. This is actually near where the enemies are. If you look at our mini-map over on the right-hand side, there's some red dots. That is the enemy's base. And by the way, I chose this map because I've been cycling through through for ages, looking for something... Um, that felt right. And this one just gave me that vibe as soon as I opened it up. And the main thing is that if we build our base somewhere up here where I'm standing and we progress to the right, it looks like there's a big open space, which is something that you need in this. You need a big open area to uh, to build your base in. So let's come over here and let's grab some coal again and then just check up on our resources. So we need to build that. We need iron. We need how many of those? I think three at the moment. Actually, no, just one for stone and one for copper. And uh, then we should be able to get going. So... Let's see how many iron plates we have. Let's put some fuel in there. We have 49, so we can make one. And now we're short on we're short on stone, aren't we? Okay, so I'll go mine some more stone. Okay, I've got the stone. We're going to put down the burner mining drill. We're going to put it right there. And uh, for this thing, what we actually want is a chest. Where is the chest? There it is. We can even make an iron one, but we're going to make a wooden one for now. We'll plop this down in front of it, and it's going to output into that. So let's give this thing some fuel, and then that'll just get a stone over time. So now we've automated that, it means we're going to take a trip over there to pick that back up again. And in the future, we won't even need to do that. We'll have conveyor belts kind of moving everything around for us. So let's put a lot of fuel in that thing. We need that to keep going. We need those iron plates. And how many of these things can we build now? So we want, I think, one on iron and two on copper and then we need two of those so we're going to need a bit more um, a bit more stone in a little bit so we can create another one of those. So over here is the copper this is important in getting us to the next step because once we've got copper we can uh, make a pump, we can make other things that are going to create power for us to run um, the different things we've been doing so far. <laughs> right, let's just, uh, let's not do that actually, let's plop this down right here. We're going to get two of these going now because we want to make a nice fast start. This is what I did last time, you know, this will make a, a big difference when crafting things early on because you've still got a lot of crafting to do before things get automated and I've probably put in too much fuel in the wrong bit there. Uh, but here we go, now we're going to start getting some copper. So you'll see that this will be used for the pump over here. It tells you the raw materials. Now you can craft all of these other things but the raw ones are at the bottom. So with a little bit of copper we make that, we take water out of the lake, we put it into one of these boilers which needs fuel so we need more stone for that however that's automated and then it goes into the steam engine which requires a lot of iron uh, but once we have the steam engine we can use electric poles. Where are they? They're right there and then we can use that to, uh, to power certain things which will, uh, mainly the inserters I think and it will make our life much more easier. So let's take those copper plates. What can we craft? We want a pump. We're going to need a lot more iron for the next bit. Right, I think what I'll do now is set up another burner drill. I'll get another furnace going, move some of the coal around and wait until we've got on a fair bit of resources here because I can leave these things running and then we can do a lot of crafting and uh, get the next stage set up. Okay, with the materials that we got so far, I've crafted a bunch of the next things and again, this is just selecting stuff from the menu really, so no need to do all of that on camera. Um, over here on the right hand side, the mini map, this is roughly where we are at the moment. Over here I reckon is where our main base is going to start and then it's going to go in that direction. And it's going to be like a, a line of crafting and automation which will look seriously cool when we get round to that level. I mean this game, by the way, if you're watching this for the first time and you're thinking, I don't know about this, this game gets real interesting in the future, just you wait. Once you start getting into the uh, tech tree, things get interesting. But anyway, over here is going to be where we'll put the energy. It's kind of uh, logical because it's right next to the coal and next to the water as well over here. Um, but it's going to head downwards. So for now what I'm going to do is just put the pump over here. But I think in the future we might line it up with the edge, but that's probably not too important. So let's just put it here. We take uh, the pump to uh, get some water out of there. Now what we're going to do is just use two regular pipes for now. I think the optimal amount, according to Zisto, is uh, to have three boilers to four engines or something like that. We're just going to have one boiler to uh, two of these steam engines at the moment. So we've got some flashing icons. Uh, these ones right here mean that there's no power or they're not hooked up to a power line. So we put one of those down and now they're hooked up, although there's no energy in the system, so it's still flashing. This thing over here needs coal. I haven't collected any in a while. Let's go pick some up and uh, then we're going to start producing electricity, which is awesome. So there's something I've forgotten to make. <laughs> yep, I forgot to make one of these. We're going to have to do a little trip to get 
um, some iron. Okay, so that's now going to generate power and we're not using any of the power at all. Notice these little steam clouds. We are actually uh, creating pollution and you'll see it on the mini-map as well. The pollution is going to attack, uh, atta attract <laughs> the enemy and so as we kind of expand we need to also defend ourselves which is another interesting aspect of this game. So we got ourselves uh, enough to make one of these. We can obviously make more however just for demonstrational purposes we're going to make the one and we're going to do our first little bit of automating. So over here we are going to put down this thing. We'll just put it on the corner here. Let's rotate it so it faces downwards and then we're going to build a track that goes around to the front side over here. Uh, let's put it... Is that a little bit close? I think it was. Yeah, we want it just to start there. So let's bring that back. Let's connect that up so it goes around the corner. And uh, now, this thing should be producing power, by the way. <laughs> we put the coal in there. Am I missing something? Have I done something silly? That's supposed to be producing power. Maybe it's uh, because it's not hooked up to anything. So let's... Uh, it does hook up to it. Let's move this over here. There's a distance you'll see that the cable doesn't connect. So we need to just move it like that. And there we go, there we go. Okay, so now we're automatically mining the coal with electricity. And it's also using these conveyor belts that I crafted, moving it around over to this side. And then we can put one of these inserters down. This thing needs electricity, so the system is now powering itself. And the inserter is going to take things off of this track and put it into the boiler. So that thing is now going to be continuously powered. And we have... Um, yeah, we have power now. That's great. <laughs> we can use this to automate more things. So this can be used on more than just coal, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to start bringing up, bringing our power lines out to the different places and automatically harvesting them. For example, this thing right here, it's uh, a little bit redundant now to bring fuel over to this thing. So why don't we just make ourselves an electric miner and uh, get that thing to work. So there we go. Let's just bring the power down over here. I don't think that was... Oh, it might be enough. No, it's not. Okay. So we'll put another one right there. And I'm terrible with these electric power lines, by the way. Some people have them really neat and organized. I'm a little bit chaotic with them. But now we have automated collecting stone, or at least uh, mining it. We still have to walk over here to collect it, which is something we'll sort out in the future. Don't worry about that. So uh, things are going pretty well now. You can see the coal is backing up because we're producing uh, you know, just enough to keep this running. You can kind of see some information about the system if you click on the power lines as well. So you can see what's using the power, and you can kind of adjust this and get all kinds of statistical information about it, which is cool. And it's now daytime, which is pleasant. Um, so we've got a little bit of a way to go now. Let's collect some more fuel here. What we want to do is start bringing the fuel automatically over to the places over here where we're mining the uh, the copper and the iron. So I want to think about how I'm going to set up this next step, because it's quite a big thing that we've got to do now that we've got this far. We just encountered our first enemy. I wasn't recording, unfortunately. It attacked me. And I don't think we're going to encourage another one to attack. It's a little bit worrying because this patch right here is a tad close to the bases over the other side. And at the moment I'm in the process of automating, bringing this to one centralized area. It's going to take a little bit of planning. You can see I've been moving some poles around and I don't want to deal with that at the moment. What I think I might do is a little bit of scanning around this area, see if there's a better place to get our copper from. Because we don't want to risk being attacked and drawing their attention so early on. So I'm going to be having a look around, but you can kind of see... Um, I'm getting just a couple of things here set up. I think it's going to take quite a bit of time because we're going to need to craft a lot of transport belts because things are going to be uh, quite separated from each other in the beginning. Once we get things automated, we'll have so much iron and stuff being produced that it won't really be a problem. But in these beginning steps, it does take some time uh, to craft everything up and get the materials together. So you can see what we're doing here. I've got some copper and iron on these belts. We're bringing them around to a central area where we're going to automate smelting them using the stone furnaces so we don't have to do this stuff manually. Now what I've forgotten is that you can actually craft these uh, science packs with by hand. I don't know why, but for some reason I thought that was later on down the tree. We can basically start this straight away, which is cool because we need to do some research over here. Um, let's press T to open that up. We actually need something just to uh, organize our belts a little bit here. It is this logistics pack right here. You can see underground belt and fast inserter and a splitter. Now the splitter and the underground belt are going to be very useful because what we want to do next is actually get coal onto these tracks. We want to have coal on the iron one and the copper one as well. And the reason so is that when our inserters pick out the copper to put in the furnace, they can also pick out the coal as well. And then we'll have uh, inserters on the other side pulling them out as well, which is going to be awesome. It's going to be really cool. Uh, but to start this off, we do need a science lab which we can craft. I don't know why I had that in my head that that was later on down the line, uh, but we can do that 
straight away, which is cool. So I think I need to craft about 10 of these, and I think I clicked 10 times, maybe 9. Anyway, we will get that researched. I'm going to get this whole thing set up, by the way. Uh, this bit right here pointing upwards is where we're going to smelt our copper and iron. That's going to go up into this middle region, and that's where our automation process thing is going to start. That's going to be on the right going in this direction and then you can see we've left plenty of space on the left as well because this is going to expand over time. Uh, this is meeting our needs at the moment but in the future we will need to expand this. And the aliens are attacking our base. This is not good. Not good at all. We are very close to their base over there and this makes the start a little bit difficult and frustrating for me. Got to say. So where are they? Can we draw, draw them out and shoot them and kill them? Apparently there's somewhere around here. Oh, apparently they've gone to the left now. Let's uh, stroll over here and see the damage. Oh, they have actually done a lot of damage. Yeah, this is kind of worrying. We are really close to their base, and I need to get a start on here because uh, the more stuff they destroy, the worse it is. You can see, I think they destroyed a power line somewhere, so now there's no power going over here. Oh, dear. Logistics research has finished and check this out. You can kind of see what's going to happen here because it's working on the iron side at the moment. So the coal goes onto the track with the iron. It goes up here and the inserters are dropping it into the furnace and pulling it out again. And you can see it's getting backed up on this track. What I've done up the top here is I've got an inserter just putting this into uh, the chest. And by the way, we can now make fast inserters. So why don't we replace it with one of those? And this is just a regular old wooden chest, by the way. Yeah, that is pretty fast, isn't it? One of the things you can do here is actually limit the amount of inventory um, that is used by the machines, as it kind of says there, uh, which is really cool. I like that feature a lot. It's quite useful later on down the line. Um, by the way, I'm pressing F when I do this, when I run over stuff and pick it up, which I don't think I've done on camera yet, but if you're new to this game and uh, yeah, you're interested in it, then that's how you do that. It's in the options menu. So there is a couple of things that we need to do. Uh, we actually need to make another splitter here. And uh, by the way, this is the science lab and you open it up and you put the potions in there. So we'll continue researching stuff. One of the things we want to do is automate the creation of potions and automate putting them into this as well, which is going to be uh, a fun little project. So let's start up with our first splitter. Let's uh, put it right, let's see, right there. And then we're just, well, that was silly, wasn't it? <laughs> that didn't work how I intended. Um, let's do it like that. There we go. Yes, that was very silly. I can't believe I got that wrong. So it's putting it on the two tracks. Sometimes when you've got items like stuck on a track, it will block it. So I just picked up a few there. So that's sending it down to the bottom here. The next challenge is to split this up and get it onto these two tracks. So this is where we use the underground belt. Uh, we're going to remove these three sections. And hopefully this works. I left enough room in case it doesn't. But if we go like that, it should still put the coal onto that track. The only way we're going to know is if we pick up some of this stuff right here. And it doesn't, which is no problem, because as I said, <laughs> I thought about this. So if we just go up one more, rotate, press R, put that on the side, then that's going to work just fine. Let's pick up this extra coal, and then it will go around the corner. So the next thing we want to do is put a splitter on this. And uh, the place to do so, I think, would now be there. Yep, that looks right. And then this can go through and put it on the side of the coal. Let's just pick up some of that excess iron that's been left there. And there you go. We've now got the coal on both sides of the track. So copper is now being produced automatically, which is awesome. So what is the next step now that we've done this? It is to uh, defend ourselves, I think. It's a little urgent because we've had some uh, of the guys attack us over on this side. By the way, I disabled the electric mining drills. We don't need these anymore. They produce pollution. I thought the less we produce, the less likely we are to be attacked. We haven't been attacked since. Uh, but what I'd like to do is automate our defense a little bit. So that means what we want to do is automatically craft these magazines and then we'll be making turrets as well, which is a little bit more advanced. But there's something very important that we need to research next. And that is, let's see, where is it? This thing right here, assembling machine. This allows us to put parts into the assembling machine and it will craft stuff for us. And then we can take it out and put it back on a track, which is really cool. Um, so that is something we definitely need to do. However, we're going to do that in the next episode because it will take a little bit of time to get there. Um, I do want to see your feedback on this episode. Obviously, you can leave a comment. Uh, the problem is I just really want to crack on and play this, so I might be recording the next episode before this one is actually published because the next slot I have for upload is on a Monday. Um, yes, so if you're watching this on a Monday, then it's quite likely I've gotten ahead of myself a bit and already started the next episode. But leave any uh, feedback that you want to down there in the description box. There'll also be a link to the game's website. If you like the look of this game, 
Uh, be sure to check it out, maybe even buy a copy if you want to play it, because uh, this is made by a couple of guys, you know, this isn't a big corporate game. Uh, definitely do support the game by buying a copy, and uh, that's all I wanted to say. So the links are all down there in the description box for that stuff. If you enjoyed the video, please do hit that thumbs up button and let me know if you want to see some more Factorio. But that is it for this first episode. I've enjoyed it, I hope you have too. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.